Hey everyone, happy Friday. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I hope you guys had an awesome week and you have fun stuff planned for the weekend. I hope that you guys are finding your, um, your joy in the Facebook group. I know we get a lot of new people in every single week. Uh, so I think it would be really good to just kind of give you first a refresher on what this group is all about. This group is for coaches who want to um, grow and scale their, their coaching businesses. Um, but we also stand out because we provide a space for you to collaborate um, with each other. So if you want to collaborate with other coaches and entrepreneurs, you can go into the search section and you can search for collab and there will be a spreadsheet for you where you can connect with other entrepreneurs just like you. Um, and we have all kinds of people in here. So feel free to share what you're working on, ask questions. That's, that's what this group is for. So I always, always, always get this question. Um, the biggest question that I get between my membership and my program is, should I be blogging? What should I do? Should I blog? That's always, that was like my biggest question. So I started my first blog 10 years ago and it was, it was not good. <laughs> I wish that I could remember what website I used to create my blog. It was like some weird, cause I didn't want to pay for anything. Um, but it was like all about what I was eating and, um, I was training for a half marathon at the time. So I like, I like kept, um, people up to date on that. Really. I think my mom read it when she got a chance, <laughs> but it was a really good way for me to have this creative outlet. And I I've always loved to write and was like, Oh, blogging. I mean, that sounds pretty fun. And so I started doing that. And I did it for a long time. Um, I actually was blogging every single day, which is kind of insane. But in that space at that time, there were so many other health and nutrition bloggers out there that were doing it every single day. So that's kind of how I felt I needed to stand out. And I did not stand out, you guys. <laughs> um, so fast forward um, five years later, I uh, started blogging again after I had stopped for a while. And then uh, I really found my, my niche, um, helping people, you know, with their online businesses. So I had a lot of blog posts, like still one of my most popular blog posts is why I switched from convert kit to mailer. Like, I mean, I get so much traffic to that one. It was just funny. It's outdated, but people go there and they comment on it. Um, but those, those types of blog posts were really helpful for me. Then I went into podcasting and I've been podcasting for a couple of years now. But I think there is like such a, a stigma around, you know, content medium. Should you produce free content or should you just do everything, um, uh, just make people pay for, to work with you? And I'm a strong believer in creating free content to help your organic machine move. Um, because when we're first starting our business and we're not, we're not making anything, uh, it's, it's important to know that you don't have to invest in Facebook ads to make your business wheels move. You can actually do it this way. So what I like to do with clients and students is to make sure that they have that foundation set up in their business. So that organic machine, those wheels are always turning for you. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because so many people skip that step. They think that if they have their website up, then the clients will come. So it's like website clients, and then they forget all the things in between and they forget that, you know, people need to know you and they need to like you and then they need to trust you and they like to read from you and they just like to, you know, feel what it's like to be in your world in some way or another, whether it's reading, listening or watching. So it's so important to have a content medium. I will always be strong in that opinion. So when I took, when I did some research on my last six clients for the Confident Coach Club, I had seen that every single one of those clients came into my world a different way, which is kind of crazy because you would think that, oh, I set this up, then the clients will come in this door. But I have so many doors created in my business because I have created free content uh, so people can get to know me. So one of the biggest ways that people will come into my world is through freebies that they can just download. They'll either hear about the freebies from a podcast episode, an Instagram post, 
um, or on uh, maybe a blog post. And so the, those are all different doors or a YouTube video, whatever it is, or from here. So think about your home and do you have, you have your home built, your website, your business. Do you have doors for people to come in? Having more than one door is going to allow more people to come in in different directions, right? So think about, you know, you don't have to do all of them all at once. Don't start blogging, YouTubing and podcasting, you know, all in the month of August. <laughs> that's, that's too much for you. Think about what's the easiest thing for you to take on right now. What could you do? Or what could you give yourself a deadline of one week? to start with. And that's probably going to be blogging because blogging, you can sit down on, on your couch. You can, you can write it out in a notebook. You can do whatever you need to do. I like to sit down and write down in a notebook and then come out and type it. That's how I like to do it. And it's easier for me. I don't need to like worry about video and are my kids going to be crazy or is the lighting going to be okay? Cause it's eight o'clock at night. <laughs> I don't need to worry about any of those things. So blogging and podcasting work well for me. But I want you just to pick one thing. What's the easiest thing for you to do? And then think about if it aligns with how your people want to learn from you. Um, so my audience, I, I can see what, what, how they're learning. I never see people um, in my space uh, screenshotting a blog post on how to grow your coaching business or how to get clients. They're screenshotting a podcast episode um, they're sharing uh, little noise, noise clips of podcast episodes, not seeing them share a bunch of blogs. Okay. So those are two different people. Usually the podcast people will go on Instagram stories and share that. And I can, you can pay attention to what they're doing if you're really watching. Um, but if we're not doing anything because we're afraid of doing a podcast, then you're not connecting with people at all. So that's why I'm saying just start with the easiest thing first, and then you can build upon it as you're getting more comfortable. Because for me, it is so much easier to just sit there and record something rather than have to write it out, um, to, to be honest. So if I even, you know, work, working with clients and students, if I have to explain something to them, I, that's going to take longer. I'm going to record a loom so I can just speak to them, or I'm going to voxer them so I can just get it out of my system. I'm not going to write them this detailed instruction because I know that my people want answers and they want them now. Okay. So think about your audience, how they want to digest content and then think about how you can deliver it to them in a way that makes you happy. So you're not dreading to, you're not dreading this task every single week. Um, so when we finally pick what our content medium is, how do you actually stay consistent with it? Um, don't do every day, probably. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. I like to set out a new podcast episode every week. If it doesn't really matter how often you do it, as long as you stay consistent. So think about what is going to work for you and learn from my mistakes. When I first started the Book Your Dream Clients podcast, we were putting out first, it was one episode a week, then it was two, then it was three. And I was like, okay, this is, this is a lot because it's easy for me to just, you know, talk, talk for 10 minutes. I could talk for hours, but then you have to edit it and schedule it and create the images and put it out there. Um, so that part of it was like ugh, to me and I don't want to do that three times a week. So I just decided let's just cut it down to two and then we cut it down to one that I can sustain. That is easy for me. Uh, blogging. I am not consistent with blogging because that is not my main content medium. I think my last blog post was posted in February, possibly. I don't know. Um, but that's not, that's not my main source. So my main source is podcasting. So how can you be consistent with the one source, your one content piece that feels really good for you? Um, even if you're doing video, the video is probably going to, be, going to be the most work. So think about how often you can do it and still feel excited to do it. Right. Uh, I know that a lot of people, I know we had Trina Little on the podcast um, this year and she was talking about how she'll just do a batch day where she'll, where, where she'll record all of her videos in, for the month and one day I think she does, which is amazing. Um, so think about how maybe you can do some batch work to make it a little bit easier for you. 
you have any questions while you're watching, uh, let me know or say hi. And I put it, put a little poll in here. I've never done a poll in a live. If you want to do the poll and tell me what your content medium is, let me know. Um, then we have, uh, how do you actually get ideas for your podcast episodes? Um, easy. I have this whole tab in my Asana project called rainy day ideas. And every time I think of something, I will put it in there. I ask people in the Facebook group, you know, what, what kind of questions would you want me to answer on the book your dream clients podcast? I put what they asked inside that rainy day idea. I will take note of maybe questions that students are asking or members are asking or people ask me about on Instagram. And I'll think, you know what, this would just be best answered in a podcast episode. Um, hence, I will probably be using this audio for a podcast episode. See, <laughs> I can go live on my Facebook group. You can see me and then I can even use this for my podcast. So there's no shame in reusing content. You can see it right now. You can see me. You're probably uh, in my Facebook group. And, and then after I recycle this, I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'm going to put it on Instagram and I'm going to put it on my podcast. Use your content everywhere. Don't think you need to just be creating all of the, all of the things all of the time. Think how you can just make your life just so very simple. Um, okay, finding ideas for your podcast. So if you're, I'm easily inspired, I can just come up with random ideas after random idea. I mean, like when we're making dinner, Terrell just already knows. Like I'll, we'll be standing there making dinner and then I'll like look and like somebody's talking to me and he'll go, are you getting an idea? <laughs> yes, I'm getting an idea. Like I have to finish listening to this and then I'll just like look around where, where's a piece of paper? Where's a piece of paper? Uh, I don't see a piece of paper. And then I'll write it on a napkin and put it on my desk for the next day. So I can put it in Asana. That's how I get my ideas. Oh, Tiffany is here. Hey, Tiffany and Rena. Those are my Soka girls. I like that podcast episodes can be any length. Blogging for some reason feels like it needs to be a longer drawn out thing. It does because you see people who say like, you have to have a blog post of 3,500 words. And sometimes I, I, I can say a lot, but I don't want to write that much. Right. And the podcast episodes are easy because you can, you can do like literally five minutes or an hour, whatever you want. It's your podcast and it doesn't matter. And if you transcribe it, then you're going to get a ton of words which is like bonus points for you. And Rena has her podcast. And Jacqueline, I'm doing podcasts with audio, video, and on the blog. Love it, Jacqueline. And I love listening to your podcast too, because your voice, I love your voice. And in, inside Santa Coaching Academy, we have so many podcasters that have been born, which is so fun to see and hear. Um, so I don't know how you guys find your content. So if I'm running out of ideas, which rarely happens, what I'll do, I have no idea why my screen is shaking. Maybe there's a train. <laughs> okay. So I'll go to three different sources. I'm going to go to answerthepublic.com to find ideas. That is an amazing place. And then I'm going to go to, um, Pinterest to find ideas. I love going to Pinterest and getting inspired. I can get inspired in like 30 seconds. Um, then I'll go to iTunes and see what else is going on out there and see if I can put my own twist on something that maybe is doing really well. Um, I will also go to Amazon and I'll look at books in my genre or my niche and see what I can kind of pull out for inspiration. And then I'll do a podcast episode on that. Um, and that, that's kind of how I find my inspiration, but I really get inspired by my students. I get inspired by my clients and I could come up with podcast episodes for days. And sometimes I think, um, when, when are these ideas going to run out? And I don't think they will. I think they'll always come. And there's always, it always seems like sometimes I'm saying the same thing, but I think it just needs to be reiterated in different ways to really hit that connection with the listeners. And then pretty soon when people are reading your words, seeing your face, hearing your voice, they're going to feel like they already know you. And then once they get to work with you, it's going to be so much easier for that connection just to literally start sparking because they already feel connected with you. They already know I like, can trust you. And all of that time has been spent of them nurturing your relationship without you even knowing it. And it's just so powerful. We created an awesome freebie for you guys this past week for podcasters. Um, let me find it. 
I'm going to put the link in, in the notes. It's for coaches, how you can get clients through podcasting. I list all the tools that I use, um, some, some tips that I've been doing for the past couple of years. So I'm going to put that in the comments and see if you guys would like it. I will link it in the show notes because we're using this for the podcast episode. And this is a great freebie. So if you have any ideas for a podcast and you just want help getting it started, download this. This will probably help you a ton. So that is all I have for today. I'm going to let you guys go. My mom and my grandma are going to come and visit me pretty soon. So Friday, it's Friday. It's time to be done. I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you soon.